Hello everyone, this is Miss Siddiqui here. In this video, we're going to talk about three types of poetry, narrative, lyric, and free verse. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify and distinguish between the three types. So let's talk about narrative poetry. Narrative poetry takes the form of a story and originated from oral tradition where people would share epic poetry aloud. It is typically in a formal meter and has a rhyme structure. It is the, one of the oldest forms of poetry, and it shares many literary attributes with short stories and novels, like having a narrator and a setting and a plot. It is told from the point of view of a narrator, and that narrator can be a main character of the story in the poem itself, or a witness to the events that are described in the poem. The narrator can also be retelling somebody else's story. So, a narrative poem always tells a story. It can be fictional or nonfiction. And that story must have a setting, characters, events, and a conflict. The most famous early narrative poem is Homer's The Iliad, which tells the story of the 10-year siege of the city of Troy during the Trojan War, as you learned about in your history classes. Narrative poems contain a formal meter and rhyme structure. A narrative poem is typically broken into stanzas which contain a particular rhyming pattern, such as rhyming couplets. Now remember, poetic meter refers to the rhythm within a poem, and meters are the arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllables which occur at equal intervals, like when you're speaking. So metered verse has a prescribed rules as to the number and placement of syllables used per line. So in narrative poems, we have metered verse. Some famous narrative poems include the Epic of Gilgamesh, Homer's Odyssey, Virgil's Aeneid, Beowulf, and the Canterbury Tales. A couple of these you will read in 11th and 12th grade. So, a very famous example of a narrative poem is Paul Revere's Ride by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, which tells the narrative of Paul Revere um, shortly before the Revolutionary War, which goes, Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. So you can hear the meter there with the syllables, and you can also hear the rhyme of hear and revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive. Right, so you hear that meter and then five and alive rhyme. Who remembers that famous day and year? He said to his friends, if the British march by land or sea from the tower tonight, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the North Church Tower as a signal light. One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be, ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. So throughout that narrative poem, we were telling the story of Paul Revere alerting the colonists of the British coming. And we also could hear that metered rhyme. So that's an example of narrative poetry. Let's talk about lyric poetry. Lyric poetry is highly musical poetry that expresses the emotions of a speaker. Lyric poetry consists of a poem, such as a sonnet or an ode, that expresses the thoughts and feelings of the poet. The term lyric is now commonly referred to as the words to a song. Lyric poetry does not tell a story which portrays characters and actions. The lyric poet addresses the reader directly, portraying his or her feelings, state of mind, and perceptions. <clears throat> the most used type of lyric poem is a sonnet, and there are two types of sonnets, Shakespearean and Petrarchian, which we will talk about also when we read our Shakespearean drama, but we'll talk about a bit through this unit. So, Shakespearean sonnets are lyric poems that are 14 lines long, falling into three coordinate quatrains and a concluding couplet. So remember, a quatrain is four lines, so if we've got three quatrains, we've got 12 lines, and then we have a couplet, which is two lines. So within that quatra quatrain, we have an, a rhyme scheme, you'll see, of A, B, A, B. So let's read the first quatrain. 
Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. So minds and fines rhymes and love and remove rhymes. So we've got A, B, A, B, where minds and fines is A and love and remove is B. And then we have a concluding up, uh, couplet at the end where we've got proved and loved as the concluding couplet. So a sonnet is a very common type of lyric poem. So another example um, is here from Edna St. Vincent Millay, and you'll see, again, it follows um, an expression of emotions, um, and it is a specific structure of a sonnet um, where we've got rhyme scheme and meter. The next type of poem we'll talk about is free verse. Free verse is very different from lyric and narrative in many ways, but it also has a couple of similarities. So free verse poetry does not conform to a regular meter or rhyme scheme. Poets who write in free verse try to reproduce the natural rhythms of spoken language. Free verse poets use many of the traditional poetic elements, including rhyme, but they do so without any strict um, set pattern of rhyme. So free verse poets still use poetic elements, including alliteration or assonance or imagery or onomatopoeia or parallel structure, but then they also focus on the natural rhythm of spoken language. Cadence is really important in free verse. Cadence refers to the natural rhythmic rise and fall of language as it is normally spoken. Cadence is different from meter in which the stressed and unstressed syllables of a poetic line are carefully counted to conform to a regular pattern. Free verse poets rather depend on their own sense of balance and proportion and timing when deciding when to end a line in their poetry, not the predetermined pattern of it needs to have this many stressed and unstressed syllables in a line. So free verse is a little more open, but again, it has some natural cadence and intentional cadence that the poets will choose based on their own aesthetic discretion. So some famous free verse poets include Walt Whitman, T.S. Eliot, Carl Sandburg, Marianne Moore, William Carlos Williams. And then here's um, a famous free verse poet um, from The Wasteland which is by T.S. Eliot. And I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. That is a free verse poem. Or here's from Walt Whitman, a famous free verse poem, I Hear America Singing. So you can read this and see, you can pause if you want, and see how this is free verse. It doesn't follow a set um, meter or rhyme scheme, but it has, a it has a cadence to it, a rhythmic quality that adds to the aesthetic sound of the piece. So make sure in your notes that you have um, these three terms copied down for narrative, lyric, and free verse poems. Thanks for watching!